Hello and welcome to this video. My name's Matt Potts of Agility Works. We're going to be taking a look at SAP predictive analysis and what we'd like to do is have a look at the decision tree capabilities within the application. We want to take some data which will help us understand the most influencing factors as to whether our customers stay or go. So what we can go and do is go and create ourselves a new model. So there's a lots of different ways we can get data into predictive analysis. We're going to be working with uh, an Excel file that I have already used in the past. So it's over in my recent data sources. And because I'm picking a data source, which is not a HANA online data source, it means I'm going to be doing all of the processing locally on my machine. So here's the Excel file. So what the system just does first of all, it just does a quick preview of the data, checks we're happy with everything, and we'll now acquire that and import the data into the tool. So we're working with banking data. And one of the columns we have here is a churn flag. So this, with our historic data, shows us whether the customers have stayed or left. And this is what we want predictive analysis to predict when we start to load it with future data. So for people that are familiar with visual intelligence, predictive analysis uses the same code lines as, as Visi or visual intelligence for things like data discovery and visualization. One of the things we're just going to do here is enrich our data. It will just convert some of the columns into measures, into key figures. And then if we so wish, we can start to visualize that data before we start to run it through the predictive models. So one of the things we might want to do is have a look at uh, the sum of deposits by age group, for example. So we can do all of those good things here in the application. So what we want to do is we want to do some predictive analysis. So up in the predict tab, we've got our source data that we just saw on screen there. And then what we can do is push it through one of the data models. And the one we're going to use is our decision tree model here. Just before we do that, I'm going to work with a sample of the, the data set rather than all of it, about 2000 rows. So we'll just add this sample option in here. And we want to do a sample based on a percentage of rows and we'll set that to 10%. We'll now go back into our algorithms, our predictive models, and we'll add in the decision tree. And we'll also now just need to configure this as well. So what I'm going to do here is pick the columns which I want to understand as to whether they influence my banking customer staying or leaving with me. So I'm just going to go and flag a few of these fields on. So we're interested to know whether income, wealth, the amount they deposit with me, the investment amount, whether those things are influential and how influential. So what is it we're trying to predict? Well, we're trying to predict the churn flag. Do they stay or do they go? Yes or no. So we've now configured the model. We can save and close and we're now ready to actually execute the model. So the data will be taken from that Excel file. The sample will be taken, so the 10% pushed through the model that we just configured, and we can now go and see the results. So what the system's been able to do for me is come up with a prediction as to whether the customer stays or goes. So one of the things we can do, if we just go and flip the button over here to charts, we can now actually see our decision tree. So one of the things we can see is that the amount the customer's deposit with me, that's the most influencing factor because that's at the top of the tree. And then we can understand, okay, well, what's the number that leads? What's the number that stays? So the no and the yes with the key up here. And then we've got the investment amount. So that's the next influencing factor as to whether the customer stays or grows and whether the figure is greater than or equal to 32,000 or less than 32,000 and then in the next branch down income. So we can understand what the most influencing factors are within our data. And that will then help us with future data to understand whether customers are gonna stay or go depending on those factors that they, uh, they have in there um, as their attributes. So one of the things we can now do with the output of the model is we can, we can visualize. So what I might wanna do here, again, similar to when we brought the data in the first place, is I might want to have a look, okay, well, let's have a look at the investment amount of my predicted customers that will stay and go to get a, a bit, little bit of an understanding about customers that go, the potential investment I'm gonna be losing from those customers. 
We then have the possibility to then share the model. So a few different options. We can actually export that data set that we've now created with that additional column that predicted yes or no as to whether the customer will stay or go as an Excel file. We can also publish the data set back to SAP HANA to Streamwork or to SAP Business Objects Explorer. There we go. So that's taking a look at how we can use predictive analysis to build decision tree models. Thanks for listening.